students the topic that we are going to discuss today is uh, types of uh, information system in the process uh, we will go through a brief uh, uh, understanding elaboration on the kind of information i mean information the concept behind information system uh, analysis and design and then ultimately we'll try to define uh, some of the though there are so many different types of uh, information system we will uh, try to see some of the prominent or the important types of information system that will help us to understand how information systems are categorized and are i mean uh, are developed it will give us some fair idea about those things so as i said today's topic is types of information system uh, designing of uh, information system is a complex very challenging or it can be at times very stimulating uh, process where a team of uh, business and system professionals it professionals uh, developed and maintained the information system. Although we have, you know, so many advances in information and computer-based information system, uh, there is room for growing. Okay, we continually grow, and we continue. There is room for continually uh, moving ahead with the, uh, the with the existing system. Okay. So, information system, as uh, I mean, understood uh, so far, is a very is a complex organizational process. Okay, so this is uh, you know, uh, information system is cannot be built okay without uh, having the fundamental knowledge of the organization we need to understand the organization we need to understand the tools techniques methods of building an information system okay among all of those things the beginning is that the first thing is to understand uh, the organization okay that is why we said it is based on okay, information system analysis and design is based on understanding of the organization what organizations objectives structure processes and also the knowledge of how to exploit information technology okay so all of this combined together uh, will help us to develop a suitable or the most effective or the most desirable information system Without having this knowledge, it is almost next to impossible. I mean, it is almost impossible to build an effective information system. So, on the other hand, it is also, uh, I mean, while doing uh, information, I mean, uh, um, doing a system analysis and design, it also helps in understanding the organization in such a uh, depth and breadth i mean to that extent okay that uh, uh, no other uh, designation or job will give you that kind of understanding i mean people who are engaged in the design and development or analysis and design of information system End up understanding okay the other side is they end up understanding the organization so much that they know the nitty-gritty everything from very minor to from very detail uh, to something uh, i mean more larger okay so they have that uh, i mean they usually end up developing that kind of knowledge so this uh, information uh, system analysis and design they was used to be considered to be uh, an art form okay so many years ago i mean in the uh, probably when people started uh, designing a system analysis and design it was considered to be an art form 
to certain extent that the outcome in most cases i mean the analysis and design outcome the process will be initiated but the outcomes are usually uh, not predictable okay because it was considered to be an art form so how in what way the artist will come up with with the final result that was more or less unpredictable but from that stage the uh, development of an information system have uh, become uh, i mean uh, to more analysis design has become more of a discipline process okay a properly uh, disciplined process now uh, there are three things that needs to be uh, considered when doing system analysis and design there are three important things that we have to keep in mind the first thing is methodology you know how does something that is considered to be an art form becomes more of a engineering form or engineering process or scientific uh, you know uh, discipline is because there are three important uh, elements here factors here. the first is methodology then technique and tools okay so let us see what are those uh, three things now methodology i mean which is used in system analysis and design is a comprehensive a multi step approach design to guide and improve the quality of the information system which is being designed okay so there is a methodology i mean uh, a methodology which can be followed i mean that is a step by step method which can be followed by somebody who learn i mean when a step by step uh, i mean a procedure is in place then anybody who understand who is able to understand the logic of the step by step can follow those steps okay so that's why the multi step approach which ultimately guide and improve the not only guide the uh, the analysis system analysis but also improve the outcome of the uh, the system that is being uh, designed then, then the next one is technique techniques are uh, processes okay that can be uh, 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 these are uh, process that uh, uh, system analysis will follow to ensure that the work is uh, the work is well sorry to for to make sure that you know the, the work is well thought out complete comprehensible to others not only to the uh, system analysis but it also is uh, comprehensive to others because in system analysis i mean uh, the process of a system analysis is such that there is a point in which the analysis have to convince others that look this is my proposed system and this is uh, how it will work and this is how it will look so that is where techniques comes in okay techniques helps in making people understand uh, those things then uh, the next one is the uh, tools okay uh, tools are uh, typically computer programs that makes it easy to use and benefit uh, from the techniques to follow the guidelines of the the overall development methodology that we have just mentioned uh, earlier and uh, the tools must be consistent with the organization system development so what does this tool do these tools make it easy to conduct the steps called for in the methodology okay so that is what the tools is tools when in system analysis tools are usually computer programs okay that helps us to follow certain procedures and uh, steps which are defined in the other two uh, factors uh, uh, that are the other two things that we have mentioned so these three elements that is methodology technique and tools it works together to form an approach which is called an organization approach to system analysis and design now let us look at the uh, how this i mean the graphically Uh, how these things works okay here in this uh, uh, i mean uh, figure you can see that we have the methodology we have the techniques 
and we have the tools and all of this function as an organization approach to develop, uh, I mean, to analyze and design a system. Okay. Now let us come to the approaches, different approaches, the modern approach to uh, system analysis. System analysis, you know, has taken uh, starting from so many years ago uh, till now. I mean, uh, well, from from the time it started and till today, uh, it has taken. Uh, I mean, so many changes along the way. Okay, so many. Uh, it keeps on evolving. It keeps on changing the methods, the techniques, the tools. It keeps on changing, uh, and these changes are basically influenced by technological uh, advance, I mean, uh, technological advancement, particularly of information technology, computer technology, that largely influence how systems were developed so many years ago, and what type of system is uh, was developed, and what type of system are developed now, and how, what are the process, what are the techniques, what are the methods, okay, all of those things seems to be influenced by the uh, information technology uh, that has been uh, that has seen so many changes over the years so if we go back to the uh, the 50s okay i mean somewhere in the 50s the this is uh, where in the 50s the focus is more on you know uh, mechanical i mean automation making things automated certain processes which are uh, manually done okay uh, are, are uh, I mean, are automated. Why? Because that during this time, during the, uh, I mean, the 50s, computers were still very large, expensive, and not very reliable. Okay. Computers were there, but they were mostly mainframe computers, which are not reliable. So, the emphasis was uh, placed on automating the existing uh, processes, such as, uh, you know, like uh, purchase or paying, and often within a single department, so they have to all the application had to be developed uh, had to be developed in machine language or assembly language during those phase then uh, uh, after this we come back to the 60s there are some changes in the 60s in the 60s what happened is that those mainframe computers are still there okay that was i mean the only option in the 50s there is no other option unreliable mainframe expensive uh, mainframe com computers were the only thing then eventually in the 60s what happened is that uh, their mainframe computers were still there but uh, smaller and faster and less expensive computers started emerging in the market okay so this is what made the system development change okay but the thing is that during the 60s also, even though we have a smaller, faster and less expensive computers, computer components or the computer itself becomes less expensive, these application or systems are still developed from scratch. Okay, people still develop from scratch. I mean, there is no ready-made or off-the-shelf uh, software available. So if somebody have to develop a system or somebody have to write a program, they have to start from the scratch okay and this building of a, you know a, a building of a system from scratch is usually done in house that is if a company or an organization wants to build a system then what they have to do is that they have to have enough manpower or expertise okay uh, within that organization who will make a team and then they will develop a system because they cannot buy a ready-made system or they cannot ask somebody, a professional a software developer to develop a system for them. But so from scratch, from nothing, they have to build and then uh, they have to uh, rely on the expertise they have within the organization itself. So therefore, it was an expensive venture. It was time consuming and it was very expensive to build from scratch and that too in-house. Okay. Then in the uh, 70s, we see uh, some changes in the 70s that the system development becomes more like an engineering, uh, you know, discipline. And then it was in this uh, uh, stage in the 70s 
that we see the emergence of database management system okay so database management system came out and then uh, uh, personal computers become more popular during this uh, phase i mean it uh, it become more and more affordable okay so uh, database management system uh, were used for system developers to store and retrieve information so probably this is uh, the first generation of a, a database management system then when we come to the 80s we come to the 80s there was a major breakthrough in computers okay so of the self software that means uh, ready made software started i mean uh, uh, ready made software written for micro computers okay the smaller computers are i mean started becoming available then uh, the interface that is being used that is uh, uh, command prom interface command line prom interface that when you use it in this operating system you know there is an interface you have to type the command and then the computer does something so uh, in that kind of interface you know you have to memorize so many so much of command so if you don't remember memorize the command it is almost impossible to do uh, the I mean to execute anything with the computer so from that type of interface computer interface in the 80s becomes a uh, uh, window base okay it becomes small window base of course in, in our country it takes a lot of time uh, personally i have seen that uh, this uh, command line interface replace uh, i have seen this replacement only in the 90s maybe i was not really uh, you know, uh, uh, updated but popularly what i have seen was it i mean it was in the 90s that i've seen these changes in our country so technology transfer of course takes time from uh, uh, country to country then uh, one important thing is that during this uh, phase uh, case tools that is computer aided software engineering tools started becoming you know uh, 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 mainstream that means uh, you can use software okay you use software to write software okay so we can start it i mean people started using software case tools okay there is a big that is a big jump in the system analysis and design so case tools are used to write systems or computer programs are used to write computer programs so that is a huge development and then uh, uh, object oriented methods becomes uh, mainstream which of course is still today is we still in use then uh, coming to the 90s so the 90s are somewhat different here the focus is more on system integration so the developers use uh, you know uh, 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 programming such as power builder visual basic you know to, to design the user interface for a system and then uh, to run on a client server platform because this is the stage where you have you know uh, uh, your the systems are having uh, a client that will be used by the basically the users and then the server on one side you have the client on the other side you have a server so the client computers are usually mini computers or personal computers and the server computers are of much faster or much uh, it has much more uh, processing capacity than the client machines and in the client machine is where the system resides and the user access through the client machine okay in the server we have the system the organizational system will reside in the uh, in the server and then it is from the client application that the system can be accessed so this is what uh, uh, the major change is uh, during during uh, the 90s this is mainly because you know internet becomes very popular so accessing remote computer is no more an issue people can access a remote computer you know using the internet so that uh, particularly influence you know how this uh, system development take place then uh, uh, if we come to the uh, i mean to the to present day now we are the focus is more on web application okay today 
and there is more you know focus on system development for the internet for forms and internet and then uh, uh, many case tools uh, you know very are uh, the case tools are becoming uh, much more powerful and can do so many things i mean uh, compared to the early days of case tools and then the focus is also more on wireless you know today everyone is having our smartphone okay everyone has a smartphone so in with this smartphone we try to do so many things right we try to access the internet we try i mean more we watch uh, tv and what not so the technology is moving towards wireless technology where uh, uh, smartphones can access a system so if a system is built an organization system is built it should be uh, not only you know browser friendly but it should also be wireless friendly or smartphone friendly so the movement has shifted towards uh, those things now uh, i would like to uh, uh, i mean uh, explain two things we have said that uh, uh, application software so what do we mean by application software application software are software which is designed to support organizational function or uh, process you know so uh, most program computer programs or software are called application software and then we also said a system analysis so uh, uh, the organizer role you know uh, system analysis uh, role is mainly to uh, see the development i mean the whole process uh, the process of a system development i mean the system analysis and design including the continued maintenance also is uh, the job of the system analysis and system analysis is the person who is responsible throughout the life cycle of the system okay now let us come to the uh, next slide there is a uh, types of system now if you look at the types of information system here in this picture we have put transaction processing system we have a management information system and decision support system before we move on to what are these three different types of information system i would like to you know uh, uh, remind you that the these types of information system basically this is uh, i mean in other words it's also called management information system so there are so many different categories of uh, i mean information systems but we are picking up okay we are picking up only these three things so that we understand the various you know categories and how these uh, information systems are categorized okay just to explain and make you understand we are picking up these three only but again it is not limited to this three only okay if we go back to the uh, uh, picture the diagram the transaction processing system is the beginning okay from transaction processing system uh, we have management information system which means that management information system the data which is used in management information system is basically collected from multiple transaction information system okay then we have decision support system this decision support system is also based on uh, man basically based on management information system plus some other sources of some other data sources are also used okay so i mean uh, this picture will help you to understand what is the hierarchy of this information system so if we go to the next slide now let us uh, come to the first one that is a uh, uh, transaction processing system as we have said as we have shown in the uh, picture the diagram that the transfix, uh, transaction processing system or tps is the basic data uh, processing okay that is the basic information system where uh, activities okay business activities or transactions are being recorded on a minute by minute or as it happens those transactions are being uh, recorded uh, i mean for example if you go to a bank you will be you will see 
that the bank manager i mean you, you give a check and or they'll give you cash or you want to deposit money so the the process or the interface that uh, the bank manager is using is basically a transaction processing system or the bank uh, a banker is using is a transaction processing system so they tries to as you are in i mean doing the transaction depositing or withdrawing the money then uh, they are doing that okay this much money and the next one deposit this much so that kind of record is being done okay so this is what a transaction processing system is so there are some uh, examples uh, good examples of transaction processing system are like uh, you know accounts uh, uh, i mean salary accounts okay or accounts uh, payable and receivable which i have just said that is a banking system check processing or a customer order processing and when you go online purchasing okay so what you order and how have they processed the order have they sent in all those recording are part of this uh, transaction processing system so what does it do the transaction uh, processing system basically collects the data uh, the uh, collect and store data about every each and every transaction okay which are the activities that uh, are stored now the uh, transaction processing system will end up in a day it will collect a huge amount of data okay so a huge amount of data uh, which give us what is uh, i mean what are the all the transactions that take place now if if i if we try to take it to the library as an example one transaction processing example in library is issue and return okay issue and return is done on a daily basis i mean on a daily or uh, i mean hour by hour or minute by minute depending upon the number of users if the number of people who come to return issue get the books issue and return are high then this uh, transaction the record of uh, you know who who borrow which book and then who return which book how much fine all of those records are basically transaction processing system and uh, i have uh, uh, i mean uh, to my understanding that uh, this uh, most uh, library automation software or uh, library management software are basically transaction processing system okay we are basically concerned about so far our software so uh, the software which is associated with libraries are uh, limited to mostly uh, books holdings managing and then searching you know these are basically a uh, transaction processing systems now there are certain characteristics of uh, this transaction processing system this uh, the transfer like uh, transaction uh, processing system or tps the volume of data are very high because it tries to uh, uh, they i mean the goal i mean the idea is to capture every transaction okay in order the process is to capture everything every detail of the transaction needs to be captured so that is why it end up recording a very high volume of data okay high volume of data will be captured now uh, this uh, the goal is also the goal of this uh, tps is efficiency that no transaction there should be no mistake in a transaction that is more important right suppose uh, if you go to a bank or if you borrow a book you borrow one book it should be in your name and your name only your friends have borrowed some, i mean two three books and it should not be in your name okay that kind of uh, accuracy or efficiency is important in uh, tps information system then uh, the and uh, processing and interfacing uh, different tps also is one of the characteristics that means combining uh, different uh, tps system that so that you know it uh, ultimately when we come to mis we will uh, i mean that will make sense then we have the the method okay what type of method will be used to develop this type of transaction processing system so the method will be mostly process orientation because we are recording the process okay so it will be the the type of uh, system that will be developed for this type of uh, uh, information system that is tps will be concerned with capturing validating storing data and moving data between different process or different modules okay so that is basically 
what I mean the kind of uh, system that will be developed now let us come to the uh, uh, I mean let us go back to the uh, diagram okay this is transaction processing system as we said we may have multiple transaction uh, tra I mean uh, transaction processing system so all of these capture the data okay or I mean uh, uh, every transactional data and then ultimately it will be combined together to make management information system okay so what this uh, management information system does is that it converts raw data from the transaction processing system into some meaningful form okay raw data we have so much of you know uh, a b uh, a has taken this much book or uh, withdrawn this much money that much and all those detailed record doesn't make sense but it can be combined or it can be put in such a way that when we compute it then it gives us some idea about the picture for example uh, we 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 want to find out you know how many books are borrowed and what this in what discipline or which in library for library professional we may say that uh, uh, what uh, uh, main class is most borrowed okay that way it gives us some understanding of which discipline is highly borrowed okay so the daily transaction when we process and combine it together it will give us a picture of if the call number is this we call we count the call number we call i mean the main call main main class of the call number and then we also count the number of times borrowed in that particular main class of the call number then we'll be able to find out in which discipline the, those books are borrowed so that kind of information is management information system okay or maybe you know the uh, for example i have given in the previous example like a bottlenecks happens we have bottlenecks i mean there are books are not being you know processed uh, as fast as it should be i mean books bought last year are still not available on the shelf for example you know that kind of managerial information i mean uh, that kind of uh, you know uh, information can be available from the transaction processing system so if the cataloging and the uh, classification section or the technical section when we look at the transactional data then we may find that okay that the law they have there is that number of person is less and number of output is therefore also less so accordingly management decision can be taken to I mean, management get the information that we need more manpower or we need uh, you know more efficiency in that particular section or that section may be automated that kind of you know information will be available so that is the example i have given the other examples like uh, annual budgeting sales management investment system analysis these are some of the other examples then we also i mean when we come to the characteristics of mis uh, uh, mis draws on diverse yet predictable uh, resources to aggregate and summarize data okay the main idea behind this uh, 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 this uh, mis is to aggregate and summarize data, data so, so that the data, data can be read and the exact scenario of the system can be understood so this may also involve forecasting future data for historical trends and business model. that means that you know when we collect uh, so much of data over the years we have collected data for example um, i mean going back to the library system let us say that if we take the number of books being borrowed by the users we find that you know number of books borrowed by users are not the same over the years january is this much february is this much march is this much and on and on we try to find out uh, i mean we try to double it using a management information system then what happened is that we see that uh, for example in a college or university system that uh, just before exams one month before the exams you know the number of big books borrowed are very high and that is a time when you know the, the circulation dash becomes overwhelmed 
So that kind of information which is collected over the years. So we can predict that next year also, uh, next year also during that exam season, when exam, one month before the exam, number of uh, uh, transaction in the circulation is going to be high. Okay, like that kind of uh, information uh, is uh, handled by this management information system. Likewise, you know, uh, during the holiday season, airline bookings or train tickets is going to be a rush. So that kind of information is, I mean, uh, uh, done in the uh, management information system. So that, that's why we say it may involve forecasting future data from the historical trends, the trends that is already recorded. Then uh, the development methods here, here management information system will be data oriented. Okay, so what are what can we extract from the existing data? It will be data oriented, and then it will uh, concern with understanding the relationship among uh, data so that it can be accessed and summarized in so many ways so that different information can be drawn. So. So uh, the model for this, I mean, the uh, information system uh, will be this a variety of will be a system that will support this variety of usage. Okay. Now, if we come to the next uh, information system, it is a decision support system. So decision support system. Uh, again, I, we are coming back to this uh, before we go into decision support system. This is diagram. We have transactional data which is generated by transaction processing system from there uh, with, with one or more transaction processing data we have management information system so management information system plus some other sources okay makes decision support system okay so that is what uh, uh, we are going to discuss now decision support system is what the main or the, the main purpose of decision support system is to help decision makers. How do we make decision based on the available uh, facts? So usually decision support system is uh, uh, interactive, has an interactive environment for decision making. Okay. So uh, this is uh, characterized by less structure and, you know, it is uh, less, uh, uh, it, it is uh, yeah less predict uh, predictable use it is i mean this help us to give a picture a larger picture which is more than okay a larger picture which is more than the management information system so we already have the management information that over the years this much books are borrowed or that over the years the bank or the the organization the corporate house has this much of money Okay, this much of money comes in, this much of money goes out. There is so much of cash flow. So, suppose the management wants to do that, they do some changes. They want to increase their cash flow, for example, or they want to invest in some uh, other places. So, they have to, they need the information that what happened there, what happened in their organization management information system, and then what about others okay they have to look at outside sources as well outside source will tell them i mean give them information which is otherwise not available within the organization that is how a decision support system works so examples like sales analysis allocation of or geographical allocation of funds or capital or and including media analysis that is what we i said that the outside source is also necessary then uh, some of the characteristics of this uh, decision support system is to provide guidance in identifying problems, finding and evaluating alternative solutions, right? So that means that, you know, you, uh, you, your system is already in place. So is there any way to improve yourself? You know, if you look at your system alone, you will be blinded by what is happening within the system. But when you look elsewhere and what, people are doing in that particular uh, uh, market or that kind of organization that you are dealing with, then you got to understand that people are doing such and such things. Maybe we can incorporate some of the best practices, I mean, uh, done by others, okay, other organization. 
So that kind of, you know, uh, characteristic is there. So that way it helps us to evaluate, it will help us to evaluate what are the alternative solutions. We, we want to do these things, what are the alternatives, what are the options we have, option, and not only based on the functioning of the organization, but options which can be uh, taken, ideas that can be borrowed from outside sources. So the, this involves uh, selecting or comparing different options or alternatives then potentially involve uh, groups of decision maker. You know, decision support system is not meant for one person only. It is not that one person decides everything. Usually it involves the key decision makers in the organization. So they sit together, they study the, uh, I mean, uh, the whatever information is given by the system, decision support system, and then accordingly, they decide what should be done. Okay, so, uh, it, it often involves semi-structured problems and the need to access data at different levels of the detail. So what type of system, what method, uh, system development methods we use here? So here, data and decision logic orientation. So the design of user dialogue, you know, I mean, what type of, uh, you know, information are you giving? That is very important because that the user, the decision makers, are going to base their decision on what are the, uh, I mean, user interface or the dialogue that you make decisions uh, support system capable of. Okay, if there are limitations, so much limitation in your decision support system, then it, that will hamper the decision makers. So that uh, should be taken care of. Okay, then uh, group communication. Uh, may also be key because it involves uh, a number of uh, decision makers. Then uh, access to unpredictable data may be necessary. So nature of the system requires iterative development and constant update. Okay, decision support system cannot be stagnant. You know, it has to be continually updated because important decisions are going to be taken so accordingly, I mean, it cannot remain stagnant. It has to be uh, updated again, and I mean, uh, as the time goes on, based on the uh, what what happens, okay, based on the environment or what happens uh, in that organizational environment, the sense support system needs to be constantly updated. Information should be always up to date. Okay, coming back to the our favorite graphic, the now, as we have said that we said the transaction processing system is the fundamental, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I mean the data from where fundamental data is being collected, trans daily transactions are being collected, which ultimately is made into information system and which ultimately also um, the management information system, which finally uh, supports the decision support system. Okay. So, that is uh, what we have uh, discussed. So we have uh, briefly touched the uh, what is information uh, system, and then we also uh, we have also mentioned some of the uh, generations or the the evolution of the uh, information system system from from the beginning from its inception till today. And then we also mentioned uh, uh, three different types of uh, information system. Uh, with that, we have come to the end of today's class. Thank you.